22nd of March, 1905. The Orphean is mine. Captain Whitlock passed away. She left a large, black box. Whitlock told me it was worth it, going to the Blue Kingdom. She said that as she was coughing up ash. I still don't know why she took us there. It's all so strange. Now that I'm captain of the Orphean, I can go wherever I want. It's scary, but exciting. But for right now, I need to focus on establishing myself. We need more supplies, and Whitlock didn't leave much behind after spending it all on our doomed journey to the Blue Kingdom. Signing off, Captain Elizabeth. Welcome back to Sunless Skies. We finished up our business at New Winchester. I think I've done everything here that I really can and want to do. I feel excited to explore this vast, vast space, but also really intimidated. Because I have no idea what's out here, and I'm extremely weak, and I have very little money, very little resources, very little anything. But, uh... I guess, really, the first thing to do is I need to establish myself. I need to get some money, some resources, and explore and understand this place more, so I think a good first thing to do is do some trade. Try to make some money that way. I have a bunch of those prospects. One of them, I think the first one I'll try to do is the Verdant Seeds. Those need to be delivered to, I think, Magdalene or something like that. But before we deliver it, we need to buy them, and they're available at Port Avon which is somewhere to the east of New Winchester. So I'm just gonna head that way and see what we find. Oh, whoops, I didn't mean to use my scout. What'd you find, little buddy? Successful expedition. Did you find anything? Oh, that's new. That is a platform. What is a platform exactly? If this is a station, what's a platform? Bancroft's Forum. Oh. Is that an enemy? Yeah. Are you an enemy? Mm. I think we're fine. You're low on supplies. Yes, uh, thank you. Yeah, they don't seem to be an enemy. They do seem to be moving very erratically, though. Are you okay? Tackety Scout. I'll just leave him alone, I guess. Yeah, I am quite low on everything, but I wanted to wait till I could find a better deal than paying full price at that large port back there at New Winchester. Yeah, so I guess I'll just go up a little bit, keep going east. Hopefully Port Avon isn't too far away. I should probably send my scout out to... Come on, Diffident Bat... Remember, that does cost supplies. Question mark. Which is... Not even on the legend, just... Unknown. Huh. Okay, let's go check it out. Ooh! Good salvage. Is that what they found? Yes! Some loot. One fuel. Nice. Just gonna go straight east at this point. Hmm. It sounds so still out here. Oh, I love the mood of this place. My god. So good. The Hybrian Wilds have devoured countless attempts at settlement. This is a forsaken place? March 25th. 
scout has discovered something. Oh, hey, another station. That's probably Port Avon. Okay, let's go. Sheridan's Expanse. <laughs> they are moving so weirdly. They're just, like, violently going from side to side. Always wanted to go to a circus. Mother said no. Poor people. Disease. The driver looks forlorn. What just happened? You've learned from your experience. You can earn more experience by defeating enemies, discovering landmarks, completing prospects, and stories. Did I just level up or something? The fastidious inspector approaches you in the galley. Captain, good day. I noticed your ship's clock had stopped. Perhaps you'd permit me, permit me to repair it. She has a little case of tools and a hopeful expression. Oh, fastidious inspector, right. The part of the horological or aurological society, however you pronounce that, focused on keeping time. Uh, yeah, go ahead. You prefer things to be right more, more than twice a day. She gives a grateful flicker of a smile and sets to work. Soon, she has the back off the clock and has spread tiny cogs across, across the galley table. Obscure horological tools gleam brassily among them. Everything has a place. I appreciate the opportunity to keep myself busy. Staring too long at the stars is harmful to the temperament. Fastidious Inspector is attempting to fix your locomotive's clock. The Inspector has a round face, brown eyes, and short, dark hair. She gives the impression of being perpetually busy. Inquire about their work, discuss the reach, compliment her skills. Right, let's discuss the reach, the wide, wild frontier, a sunless domain, but impossibly verdant, with the gargantuan vines, cathedral sized bronze woods, and livid fungal archipelagos. It has an uncouth splendor. But I miss Albion and the steady light of the clockwork sun. These sunless reaches are so misty and quiet. She pauses. But critical. The territories here are rich with raw hours, and enough vegetation grows on them to feed the whole of London, even if some of it is a dubious shape. The, the light of the clockwork suns. They have a clockwork sun in Albion. That's one of the places that I can go, right? Lotheria, Blue Kingdom, Albion. What happened to the Reach's son? And London has a man-made son. How did Her Majesty defeat the Old One? Defeat? Did they kill the Old One? <laughs> we warred and we won. It's not my area of expertise, I'm afraid. The sons made the law, they say. Now Her Majesty makes it. As for the Reach's son, she looks through the window at the lightless, stirring mists. I don't know. Do sons grow old? Do they die of natural causes? I think that would probably be better than the alternative, wouldn't it? Ask for news of London. The seat of the Empire lies in far-off Albion, where a man-made sun burns in the sky. Another sun blazed there once before her renewed majesty conquered it. London sits in her coat of smog. Courtiers squabble at the foot of the throne of hours, hoping to receive endowment of years. Meanwhile, hard-working civil servants labor to ensure everything runs as it should. Was there a touch of archness there? All as normal. I miss her, though. There's no city like London in all the skies. And Albion is very different from the Reach. Much more civilized. Endowment of hours, or years rather. <laughs> Endowment of years. Such a strange concept. Let's 
ask about the Winchester War, the reach is torn by discontent between London loyalists and the more independent settlers. There are those who feel that London is a long way away and that they do a better job of governing themselves. The frontier attracts independent spirits. We call them tackities for the hobnail boots that are so practical out here. London, unsurprisingly, disagrees. The Windward Company earnestly represents Her Majesty's interests in the region, sometimes very earnestly indeed. The Tacketys call London's loyalists stovepipes, for our hats, I suppose. She avoids looking at you. And you, Captain, where do your sympathies lie? Ah, so that explains who the stovepipes and the Tacketys are, two major factions. So yeah, the Tacketys are the more independent people who don't like what London's doing, don't like being under their rule. And the stovepipes are the London loyalists, who are part of the Windward Company, which is a proxy for London. Oh yeah, I'm, as a revolutionary, I'm definitely going to feel no loyalty to either side. I'm going to be completely neutral. No. <laughs> I... My loyalty lies with the Dacities. These are new lands. Why should old rules, or old masters, hold sway? We are never free of the past, she says, her hand touching her pocket watch. Never. Yeah, I, I mean, obviously, their uh, loyalty lies with London. Compliment her skills. Her hands are deft and sure. She polishes, she cleans, she reassembles. Thank you, she says. A small, embarrassed silence. It's possible the inspector is pleased. It's rather hard to tell. I think that's it. Oh, wait, no. I did not inquire about her work. What are the duties of an agent of the horological office? She sniffs. It is of fundamental importance that 10 o'clock on the 2nd of June in one corner of the Empire occurs at the same time as 10 o'clock on the 2nd of June in the opposite corner. How is an Empire to function if it can't agree what day it is? Unfortunately, the process is complicated by the fact that time is less reliable than it was. The hours trade has seen to that. <laughs> I love that. Time is less reliable than it was. Ask about the hours trade. You've heard the Empress awards her favorites with gifts of years to extend their lives, and that you can become rich, mining for hours to satisfy London's hunger for them. <laughs> I like that sentence, mining for hours. Very easy to misinterpret on a first read through. Oh, hours have more uses than that. We use them to increase the efficiency of work worlds, to speed journeys to distant regions, to resolve overcrowding in prisons, it... B b huh? Uh, I'll come back to that in a second. It does make my life more difficult when time time knots and stretches like wool on the loom. More difficult, but more vital. Her Majesty seized a great trove of them when she assumed the throne of ours. And now even more have been found in the Reach. Miners dig them from the ground. She looks momentarily wistful. I hope... Some day to retire with the modest pension of years myself, to prolong the better part of my retirement. Okay, I just want to go back to this, the other uses of hours or years. Um, spending them to resolve overcrowding in prisons. I don't know how spending time literally spending time as a, a unit, a tangible thing. I don't know how that works, but it sounds like they're fast forwarding prisoners lives so that they die and have more room to put more prisoners in. That sounds horrible. Like if you spend an hour or a year on a person, does it fast? I mean, God, how does that work? 
It sounds both like it can fast forward their life, as I talked about when using it to resolve overcrowding in prisons, it sounds like it's fast forwarding their life so that they die quicker. But then they also talk about being able to live longer with a pension of years and whatnot, so it sounds like it's sort of slowing down time? I have no idea how that works. Now that's everything. Bitter a good evening. And to you, Captain. I think I shall make a cup of tea. Yeah, so you've learned from your experiences. What does that mean exactly? Did my skills go up or something? Yeah, I don't see anything obvious that happened from that. Maybe it triggers certain events and stuff like that? I don't know. Anyway, let's continue. Oh, no, I didn't mean to do that. We're fine. I didn't blow anybody up. Polymere and Plenty Circus. Well, this is not a Port Avon. You're approaching a newly discovered port. This has significantly reduced your terror. Wait, let me dock so I don't spend any fuel or anything. This has significantly reduced your terror. Your crew are always thankful to find another place of relative safety in the skies. However strange or full of devils or covered in mushrooms. <laughs> okay, so yeah, discovering new places, or at least new stations, reduces your terror. Gervais's Rest. A traveling circus has settled here, too afraid to go further and too afraid to turn back. Its clanking, gaudy locomotive scavenges such audiences as it can from nearby homesteads and delivers them for an evening of shabby, desperate, big-top magic. The Inconceivable Circus. The Greatest Show. The Greatest Show. That's what the adverts promise. The reality is not impressive. Aside from the big top that dominates the circus, the place is shabby, poorly maintained, and even more poorly attended. Bored-looking circus folk, man-rotting booths, and the clowns painted on smiles are no match for the deep-set misery behind the grease paint. Even the Calliope music playing on a rundown piano is more grimly resolute than cheery. Oh, hey, look at the card. Right, if I move my mouse over here, it covers it up. Look at the card that person's holding. It's, it's got, like, bats as the symbol instead of whatever other symbol it would have been. It's really cool. The Eight of Bats, I guess. Um, hmm, before I do any of that, I think I want to look at the shops. What can we buy here? Gourd of Chorster Nectar. Quite expensive, 100 coin per each one. Speaking of, I have how much? Where does it, where does it say my amount of coin? Eh, whatever. Oh, up here. 149. A whistling apiarist is selling fresh, or at least recent, a Corster Nectar. A versatile substance used variably as a sweetener, an intoxicant, and a tonic for the vocal cords. The apiarist seems jolly, though his tune is not. For tea drinkers, it's a sweetener. For poets, an inebriant. For singers, it's an enhancement, widening the vocal range by a valuable semitone or two. Yeah, they don't have much. They don't even have fuel, but they do have supplies. Uh, I don't remember what supplies cost at the main place, but this is probably a good deal. Probably? You can buy supplies here as long as your crew are content with circus food, roasted nuts, skewers of meat and veg, sticky honey cakes. Also acts as a mournful outlet for the Wit and Vinegar Company, a modest London lumber concern. A <laughs> mournful outlet. Somebody probably wants bronzewood. Actually, do I have a prospect for bronzewood? How do I view my prospects? I thought I took multiple prospects. I thought I took two of them, but in my journal, I'm only seeing this one trading opportunity for the seeds. Anyway, that's fine. I mean, I can't afford the bronzewood anyway. I literally can't even buy one. I guess I'll buy the supplies. I am desperately low. 
Okay, what can we do here? Purchase tickets, how much? Ten, not too bad. A bored urchin in a dusty top hat waits to take your money. Oh, right, we should get a port report. This doesn't seem a location of tactical importance. Even so, there may be interest in who attends. The big top looms dramatically in the fog of the reach, but it's not nearly as imposing as the massive obelisk floating nearby. Some enterprising soul has hung bunting between it between it and the big top. A massive obelisk? What's that about? As for the circus itself, outside of the performers, it is practically deserted. You may be the first new face in the audience in quite a while. Okay, yeah, so you can hand your port reports in to the Indurate Veteran at Victory Hall or the Prudent Secretary at Company House in New Winchester. Okay. Yeah, that's very similar to Sunless Seas. You would gather a bunch of port reports and then turn them in once you got back to home base. And you'd get, you know, some moderate rewards from all that. Enough to kind of ease the... Ease the the relatively quick burn of fuel and supplies that you get. Something to stem the bleeding. <laughs> Try to sneak behind the tents. Ooh. Need two tickets to the circus to enter the big top. Wait, why do I need two tickets? Why not just one? Am I going with someone else? Amusements, two tickets, speak to the ringmaster. Familiar face at the circus three. Okay, well, before we do anything else, we need to purchase tickets, or I could sneak behind the tents. We should probably save that for after we've done everything we can with tickets. Because if we get caught, they're probably not going to sell us tickets. Oh, I have five tickets to the circus. The urchin hands over your tickets with no apparent enthusiasm. Thanks, he mutters. Enter the big top. The pride of the circus. Whatever that counts for here. The greatest show. No one in the meager audience displays any enthusiasm, not even when the ringmaster thunders in on a horse-drawn calliope. I have no idea what that is, by the way. Then come the acts themselves. Oh dear. The humiliated magician's trap doors fail to open, leaving his glamorous assistant notably unvanished. <laughs> the bereaved acrobat swings from a single trapeze. The other hangs lonely and unused. The pensive clown's fire-juggling act ends in disaster, and not the humorous kind. The less said about the lion tamer, the better. He should recover. I have one sky story. I guess this would have maybe reduced our terror if we had some. Yeah, just like, similar to how hours are an actual resource, that I, I assume you can get hours, just as it sounds like other people can, but also things like stories are also a resource that I think you can spend? Let's visit the amusements. At first glance, the circus is in poorer shape. A second glance reveals how much worse things are than that. You try the battered mushrooms and realize why they have yet to take off as a beloved snack. Attempting to dispose of the bag, you duck behind a stall and find a pile of them already waiting. <laughs> Another visitor pokes her head around. Is this where the bags go? She asks and deposits her own with the rest. The circus staff are coming to recognize your face. Yeah, I've got two familiar face, I need three. Should I buy more tickets? It's either that or sneak behind the stuff. So let's skip more tickets. It's not that expensive. A scribbled note. Oh, uh, it also says up here the grubby urchin is nowhere to be seen at the ticket booth. Back in, it says, followed by an indecipherable scribble. How useful. Oh. Ah, I see. There's nothing I can do but sneak behind the tents, I 
can't go in without tickets, and there's no one there to sell tickets. Caught in the act. Uh oh. A pair, a pair of clowns whose painted on smiles do not match their actual scowls spot you immediately. There's nothing funny about the heavy sticks they carry. You are less than politely escorted back to the big top. Perhaps if you were better known around here, they would be less concerned. Did that hurt my reputation? No, I still have the same familiar face. I, hmm, I guess I just have to come back here later. Okay. Right, well, I guess I'll leave. So, I still need to keep going east of New Winchester. I'm a bit northeast. Maybe I should go down? I think I should send my bat out. What can you find, buddy? Nothing? No, something. Oh, that's almost dead east of New Winchester. Almost a straight line. Let's go there. I did not mean to do that. The mood of this place, the mood of everything in this game, I'm sure, is going to be amazing. All these different layers of sky and floating islands and whatever else this is. Mm, you look like an enemy. Yep. Damn. Just did some really good shots. Whew. I don't know why they didn't shoot at me. They had a clear shot. Approach the buckled wreckage poised to plunder the plunders. Okay, there's the same description as the other one. Board it. The crew of the Marauder lie dead in the corridor, killed not by her guns, but knives and small arms fire. The only survivor is the captain, locked in the brig with a bottle of brandy. Chalk eyes stare back from every wall. When he ran out of chalk, he began scraping them in with his fingernails. Little remains of them, but bloodied stumps. Seen this before, Captain, says a crew member, grasping your arm. Sky madness. Magdalens can treat it, if you can be bothered to take the poor sod. Huh. I mean, they were the captain of a marauder. Not exactly someone I'm interested in helping that much. This will begin a short quest. Um, let's do it, though. Let's bring the poor fellow on board. The crew wrap the sky-maddened captain in blankets, then secure them tightly with belts. It takes four to transport him safely to your locomotive. He might not be happy restrained, but it should keep him from harm until you get him to Magdalene's. Magdalene's lies to the south-southwest of New Winchester. The captain secured, you have a moment to see whether there's anything of worth on this locomotive before abandoning it to the wilderness. I now have a tale of terror. Loot the hold. What could it be? A clasped jewelry box. The box is entirely empty of all precious trinkets. What it does contain, however, is a stuffed and preserved corpse, which slides nearly out of a concealed compartment. Once the screaming has stopped, it is determined it might attract a certain sort of buyer. Uncanny specimen. Okay, someone will want that, I guess. Whoops.
What the hell is that? A diamond. What? Something that glisters. Uh. Hmm. Hmm. Mine requires mining. I don't have mining, do I? Yeah. Oh. So you can get mining equipment. That looks like a heart, by the way, or like some sort of organ. It looks organic. Um. So a mining trail would probably go onto an auxiliary slot, I would bet. Bridge slot. Small armament. Yeah, it's probably either small armament or most likely auxiliary. I definitely want one of those. Probably damn expensive, though. Wait, why is it not on the map anymore? I hope it shows up when I leave, because I don't... You know, I want to come back to it. Okay. Ah! Ah, crap. Did that just hurt my hole? No. 30 out of 30. We're good. Where the heck is Port Avon? Avon. He just found the thing I already found. Hmm. I'm thinking Port Avon might be back down here. But I'm gonna keep going. The scream of train whistles in the distance, marauders embarking on a raid. Mmm. Chances gloom. It is very dark and creepy here. I don't think Port Avon is in here. Uh, lonely span of a lonely span of sky dappled with drifting spores. I'm very low on resources. I do not want to starve. I should probably turn around. But what if it's just through here? I'm gonna spend some more supplies. Please find me something good. Scare returns from the wide sky. It has nothing to report. Man, I'm really far away from New Winchester. It would be wise to turn around. I'm... whoops. I'm going to turn around now. The good thing is supplies deplete with time, not with speed. So if I go full speed back, it probably won't use up that much supplies on the way. There's more fuel that's going to be used up, and I have quite a bit of that. So let's just head back with a slightly different direction. Like kind of, you know, sweep down here. I guess I probably won't scout with the bat. I can't really spare the supplies. Oh, I think I gotta go back out through Chance's Gloom. I think this is a dead end. A cul-de-sac. An alliance of marauders have made their home here amidst the bones of failed settlements. Now we can go a bit more south. Ooh. 
Lips, what's that? Something to crave. Hmm? 